Hello. Hey, the booming voice is back Hello. there. Dr. Daly and Dr. Doyle. Uh, sorry. The double D's. All right. All right. So, can I get a motion to approve the minutes? Okay. All in favor? Um, fortunately, there was no correspondence this month. And I'll wait for Don to get back to his seat and finish. I'll let him finish chewing. We'll skip on to Remsco, which they moved the meeting date for, so I couldn't make it. Would someone who was there be able to tell us what happened? I'm thinking. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, were you there? <laughs> Are you still there? I'd have to. I'd have to look back at the minutes myself. I don't. Okay. So where's Tim? <laughs> Tim had to run out to do oh. um, moving stuff because we're not going to be here next month. Priorities. You don't chew it? If you, uh, yeah, that's right. Okay. So, um, academic was a pretty long discussion on the check and inject program. Um, almost everybody was in the room, but I told the other people, and the problem came down to that the FDA sent out a recall notice to Boundary specifically on the syringe because the syringe was only marked off in 0.3 and 0.15. And that was done purposely because easy for the EMTs to be able to give those. However, the FDA was concerned that kids under 15 kilos would be overdosed, and this was very dangerous, even though our protocol say it's not the case. And most of us probably wouldn't have a problem with it. Uh, <clears throat> so Boundary said on a recall notice to everyone who has a kid, saying that syringe has to be replaced with a normal 1cc syringe. Uh, the problem is they really didn't give a whole lot of instructions on how to draw up the medication. So we had a long roundabout discussion as to should we do an education program, should we not do an education program. And the bottom line is it came down to there is already an education program, and hopefully Tim will send out a link to that, that education program that the state has. It's kind of where we are. Anybody from the academic committee see anything different than what I just mentioned? Okay. So that's where that is. Uh, PS, PLS protocols were brought up at Med Standards and CMAC for approval uh, in January. So those should be out there. They are really nice. We've had a couple of meetings uh, going over on the phone. And I think that everybody will be happy with those. Um, there are a couple of training courses that are available. If anybody wants them, let me know. Uh, Cobble School has their annual uh, EMS get together. I don't know if you want to mention anything about that. Howard? Uh, just a winter symposium. It's a one-day conference, eight hours of CME credit, two meals, 75 bucks. Um, even if you're not in EMS, this year's got a couple of good topics, some great speakers, but a couple good topics like compliance, ethics, and um, groups that'll, that'll fit both hospital-based and EMS providers. It sounds like, by the way, I didn't even tell you, Don, global skill, Regional hospital is actually paying for their ED staff to attend if they want. Oh, wow. that's not it. So, and that's on January fifth. Sounds good. That's the end of that. Okay. Um, it looks like CMAC and Semsco are both not meeting until January. So, QI, Tom, do you guys meet? Yeah. Uh, CARES updates uh, with well, uh, Albany County's updated through the, uh, through 2016 back uh, filled. Uh, Schenectady County is going through, uh, they've got 2018 up. A um, <clears throat> little hiccup with uh, uh, some of the areas in Schenectady County, Granville. Uh, they're having trouble finding some of the data. Uh, and then there's uh, Ellis Hospital having trouble with uh, some of the hospital data uh, for the CARES, uh, uh, what CARES needs for their data input. So um, apart from that, um, uh, Saratoga County is, uh, also had a uh, little bit of hiccup. They have some data, but it's getting into CARES. There's some changes with how, they, um, how they've done uh, some dispatch stuff. So uh, basically, Deb has to go in and figure it out that side before she can enter it into the system. But uh, they have the data that's moving along. Um, 
part uh, uh, brought up um, some issues with um, uh, uh, any type of um, documentation being left with patients when they're dropped off. So not just PCRs, but any type of run sheet, cheat sheet, any documentation being left with the patient. So we said less than 30% of patients dropped off have any type of documentation being left at the hospital. Um, so uh, uh, that's something that we're hoping to uh, kind of address going forward. Um, and then the last thing he brought up was trying to run some of the analytics on um, uh, diagnoses or um, what's coming into the hospital. He found 149 different um, types of patient categorization. So there were something like 15 different ways to, to uh, document on an overdose. So it was overdose, suspected overdose, opiate overdose, over, opiate overdose suspected, alcohol <coughs> overdose. Same thing with cardiac. Cardiac cardiac pain, chest pain, suspected chest pain, STEMI chest pain, STEMI suspected, STEMI confirmed. So the idea was to try to uh, get a few people together to try to look at if there's a way we could standardize or uh, limit some of the uh, types of diagnoses that we're, uh, that we're seeing just to make analytics uh, easier. Uh, so that goes along with the documentation standard uh, as well. So those were kind of the big things that we talked about. So Tim had to go out to do moving stuff um, for HIAC. Um, the members of understandings were updated. The MCI and hospital radio communication system is a unending process that hopefully sometimes will bear some fruit. But actually getting closer up, we... Um, except for Schenectady County, so. Except for Schenectady County, we still haven't figured out how to integrate into the 800 system. Um, we will have a radio within uh, all the emergency department for MCI management and assistance um, at some point over the next month. So. That's progress. Much, much, much closer than that's been the best. And Mike, will that radio be able to connect with all the different talker on groups? Uh, we're making sure that it can. There will be one one talk group we can use, and then there'll be the ability to use interoperable channels to communicate between emergency departments, particularly over something like you know, the hydrochloric acid exposure, mm -hmm. for example, where we can poll hospitals and then have a have some conversation with Take takes one radio. moment. Yeah. Thank you. Just want to introduce a, a guest who's joined us. Um, got Dr. Kurt Edwards here sitting to Tom's right. Uh, Dr. Edwards comes to us as the new director of uh, surgical critical care and trauma over at Albany Med. So thank you for coming here today. So agency updates. Um, Jonesville Ambulance is adding CPAP, Jonesville Volunteer Fire Department is adding CPAP. No other updates. Uh, multiple pad up um, new programs. Fitness Artist, Classes with Flying, St. Basil's Church, Burt Hills <coughs> Vet Hospital, with Chase Construction, FICO Clifton Park Renewal, New York State Department of Health, Occupational Health Safety. New York State Office of the Medicaid Inspector General, Christ Lutheran Church of Albany, Brunswick, State School District, New York State Department of Corrections, Zion Lutheran Church, New York State Environmental Protection Agency, Proctor's Theater, and Rensselaer County Department of Social Services. New business, um, adding acetaminophen to Mohawk formulary. Is anyone talking about that or is that just a statement? Well, you're the only <laughs> Mohawk I can see. This is project. Oh, you're back there. Uh, so, Mohawk Ambulance Service is in the uh, process of applying to state DOH to become an ATS service or a blood transfusion service on the ambulance side. One of the very strong recommendations from uh, DOH is that we would be able to treat one of the complications of uh, blood transfusion reaction, which is fever. Uh, and uh, by use of uh, acetaminophen. So uh, we have uh, written a letter to the region requesting an expansion or an addition to 
our ALS formulary for acetaminophen elixir to be carried. It will be a PO medication. Um, and to um, help facilitate that, uh, we drafted an adult and a pediatric protocol. Uh, our, our agency's opinion that if we're going to treat fever, we should be able to treat fever across the board, not just in the a rare setting of a blood transfusion reaction, but we'd be able to treat it in the setting of sepsis um, or even fever from common uh, uh, infection, etc. So uh, we uh, presented the region with uh, a letter of request and a protocol for consideration. <coughs> Any discussion? So I think if, if I can make one motion just to immediately resolve any needs for this. Um, this, oddly enough, acetaminophen has never been on our inter-facility transport med list. Um, I'm not really sure why not. Uh, but that's not something that requires any additional oversight or, or review. And I would say we add that immediately. I don't like that as a motion. All in favor? All right. Any opposed? <clears throat> and from the other motion I would make would be to send this protocol to the Collaborative Protocols uh, Committee to work on it and uh, integrate it because I think it's a very reasonable idea. Do we want to discuss the protocol itself now or just the title? Did everyone get a chance to look at the fever protocol? Is this just for uh, transfers that Mohawk's doing with the blood product? I think that's how it would be starting, but that's then after that, it would be. Because of the requirement that would be so, so, so that in and of itself, though, would be outside of 38, right? So that's outside of us, except for the fact that we just need to put. No. Is it on the state <laughs> formula? Then why not? I believe Motrin it is. Also. Not just for blood transfer, we want to use it across the board. We also want to test things like sepsis, things like that. So it isn't well. just blood. Okay. So, we figured we'd start with one so basically, this is just a proposal to the collaborative yeah. group to do this statewide. Right. So we make it a little bit easier and get rid of the 10.15 milliliters. I don't think the extra uh, the FDA five milligrams. <laughs> 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 the FDA wants to third decimal place. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, how are they checking the temperature? What kind of thermometers do they have? Oh, she's going to go there. <laughs> Which <laughs> random number generator do they purchase? There's only one right oh. temperature. <laughs> <laughs> My patient's not getting ibuprofen or uh, acetaminophen then. Checking the temperature. <laughs> 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 Are we specifying the device? <laughs> Just the delivery. <laughs> My suggestion with bringing this forward to the Collaborative Protocols Committee would be that there be no mandate of a device, what type of device they use. Agencies will use different ones. Um, the devices themselves should be FDA approved devices, so hopefully we'll all have a standard margin there. Um, but, um, but that said, um, you know, I think this is a protocol that goes in with the asterisk of if trained and equipped and not a required drug to be carried by every agency, um, which would also mean that every agency doesn't have to carry and calibrate thermometers either. Just throwing it out there that your thermometer should be continuous because how would you know that you haven't changed in temperature? If, it's, 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 one, if, you're just yeah, if you give it, it once or check twice, it by per right early. Because you can continuous when you look at pro. ALS. Potentials. 
but at the same time, I would argue that in most healthcare settings, temperature is not monitored on a continual setting. It's monitored on an at will or, frankly, well, I understand that, but they're, they're asking for blood, which is not a BLS modality. Nope, you just switch back and forth. We're in the discussion now about whether or not you go to collaborate. Just being silly. I thought you were talking about thermometers. <laughs> oh, okay. That begs the question, though, because it's a separate and distinct strategy they want to add. Acetaminophen for treating fever. Is that a BLS modality or is that a? I would keep it as ALS, and then when we define it as is safe, then we could open it up to BLS. To BLS. So that's easily <laughs> misunderstood as could be a BLS modality. So potentially not the way to put not the way to put it. Yeah. It's clearly Down the road. CC and paramedic. So, so are there so just for clarification, the initial discussion was to approve it for Mohawk to use it just for their end of facility right. purposes. Yeah. The second discussion is whether to send, right. send this, this right. and, right. Send right. This to and send it to Clavert. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, so, for so, good. so for Mohawk, I don't think they need a vote for us. It's outside of 38. No, but my question is, they're not the only agency that is either in the process of or has been approved before. So what's Empire doing? Huh? Empire, are they carrying anything for us? I don't know. Well, that's why I'm asking the question. Bruce will be our empire for her. But this is not the Well, it doesn't. It doesn't matter for, with re, with regards to interfacility stuff. If, a, there's a question of whether or not this body even needs to approve anything right. for stuff that's outside of Article 30. But more specifically, even if they do, they just added it to the to the list of those medications. So anybody else that comes along with a blood transport right. can uh, use it. application can use it because it's there. <laughs> So any tra any transport could use it. Well, yeah, it's fair enough. Specific to blood. Fair right. 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 <coughs> Clarify, I'm, I'm getting a little off. I don't know quite what we're out to answer right this second, but <coughs> if the question is, can we or should we endorse adding acetaminophen to a fever protocol? That seems like an easy yes or no question. If there's a question about this protocol in particular, I would point first to probably a more important issue, which is, the only thing it says around vascular access is large bore vascular access without any other. And a 500 ml bolus with no reasoning <coughs> behind it, so well, every sore throat gets. What is large bolus? bore? Uh, you know, one year old versus a 14 year old. You know, we should probably be a little more prescriptive, actually, in the rare case of this. Uh, so the protocol itself might need a little tweaking. Yeah. But there's a <coughs> question from, are we okay with it adding the seat amendment for the purposes of blood? Of what Mohawk is after today. I'm just trying to get clarification on the so question think, we're asking so we can answer and move. I think the, the feeling is that Mohawk doesn't really need our permission to do it for the transfer. However, if they're going to carry it and then potentially use it on pre hospital patients, then they do. Because as well, if, we're, if you have this on the truck and you have someone who is in pain or has a fever, then they would need our permission to do that. I would agree. So the ATS forms say recognition and management of transfusion reactions, availability of necessary medications, equipment and supplies necessary for the management of adverse reactions, and documentation. That's so I, I would say that this region doesn't need to act on Mohawk's request to use this for blood. And I would make a recommendation that our REMAC forward this to the Collaborative Protocol Committee for Discussion, review, and possible inclusion down the road. Before we get a motion, second, do I? Yeah, I, I don't disagree with with Howard, Howard, but we did approve it for uh, Mohawk, even though we don't necessarily have to. I think we just already did, yeah. which yeah. I think is good process anyway, just to give them our seal of approval. But I want to ask a basic question, and I'm not sure. I don't mean to throw water on fire here, but what are we trying to accomplish with this protocol for pre-hospital patients? I mean, most of these transports are going to be fairly quick to an emergency department. I know there are going to be outlying areas, but what are we trying to achieve by making sure we give acetaminophen to someone and documenting a fever? If it's the septic patient, we're going to do everything else. By the time they get to the 
the ED we're going to get 15 minutes of or 20 minutes of whether they get acetaminophen or not frankly is not significant and the only thing that I would say is significant in any of this from a pre-hospital point of view not from a transfer point of view from a pre-hospital point of view might be the febrile infant especially if they haven't had any anti-pyretics at home so I think if anything the committee should look at that um, you know especially if the if the patient's got a history of febrile seizures etc so that's my opinion I agree with you in in intention um, when you look at major studies though even if I'm sitting outside the ED door to first dose on a lot of different medications is a whole lot you know you're looking at a 45 minute an hour window especially if it's not critical so that 15 minutes even if it is short transport is probably saving the patient a half hour to an hour conservatively on first dose so I get what you're saying uh, and I back it up because I often sit in places and go we can teach people on various levels to do a lot of different things should we and that's is that where we best put our resources well, that's my because question. right because on the on the flip side of this you know we continue to lose EMTs because we keep adding things to a curriculum and and well that's standard and what you keep hearing is while the course is so big there's so much to do well sure you can teach EMTs to a lot they do a lot of things they're called paramedics I think this would be a very easy lift to add to an ALS service. I don't think it's going to be a life-saving thing, but also from a emergency medical system, by the time we're getting to see them, the little girl's bouncing around the bed, mm -hmm. and mom's okay with taking her home, versus, okay, let's get her some Tylenol, and sure. we've got another two hours in the department. Yeah, I agree on That's this my particular selfish take one, on this. but I really get where Sam's coming from, and I really yeah. support a lot of it. We yeah. need to pick our horses. Having been a part of this discussion at this point probably five times, I think, with Bruce first bringing us Tylenol six years ago? Longer than that. Five, six, five, six years ago. <clears throat> um, I'm going to channel my inner rush cow for a minute and say, <laughs> please, it's Tylenol. Let's give it to people. It makes them feel better. Um, I honestly don't have a horse in this race one way or the other, except to make sure that we have this available for patients who will ultimately have the potential to be on these ambulances, going into a facility, and we need to be able to treat transfusion reaction. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's Tylenol. We have single doses now, so we're not talking about multi-dose, nice uh, multi-doses for uh, ambulance yeah. carrying. I don't see this as being a, a major level. And I think the place to debate this really is at the collaborative group and see what across the state would make the most sense. Because, you know, I agree with Sam, eh, does it really matter? Maybe, maybe not. But I think at the end of the day, the the Rob, sure. Rob's point, this falls to the same thing that giving Decadron in the ambulance does. Mm -hmm. It gives us the ability to have that patient leave the emergency department faster. And frankly, right now, I think that's a fantastic <laughs> idea. <laughs> and ultimately, it'll probably come up as a optional not you have to do it type thing. So we make I think motion. refer referral is, is right. I think we go back to the original motion and you want to restate that? I don't think I can move it, so it's yeah. It's gotta you, be one of you guys. You can't okay. make it. I, I, I think uh, I think Dr. Doyne made a motion to forward this no, proposed okay. protocol to the protocol committee. How we can no, I think I made that I think Perfect. I think, there you go, I Dr. Dolly. Don seconded. Don seconded. Take to the collaborative protocol group for discussion with you and inclusion. Like Beth said. What she said. What Beth said. Uh, through Don. Through through like me through. Okay, Don yeah. seconding. All in favor? <coughs> All right. Anyone against? So. I think we already talked about the syringe recall from academic. Is there anything else you want to add? Okay. Then finally, after about six months of saying we'll come up with something, they sent you a round of uh, proposed um, protocol for picking when to go to in this region, Albany, and when to go to one of the other stroke centers. So generally, you start with suspected stroke. Um, if a comprehensive stroke center is your closest, then you're done, you go there. If it's not, you do the fast ED. 
if they were moderate to high risk, or say if they're not moderate to high risk, then you go to the primary stroke center. If they are, next in is it a wake up or over three and a half hours since onset. And I think also in this probably should add a less than 12 or less than 24 hours. We'll have to ask the neurosurgeons what they would prefer for that. Um, if it's a wake up, then it goes to the comprehensive. If there's a greater than, so opinion of the group, should we say if it's greater than 30 minutes additional, go to the primary stroke center, or if we say it's less than 30 minutes additional, go to the comprehensive. <coughs> what would make more sense. It's a six one half dozen other, but you guys are reading it. Can Who are you, gonna confuse with Can less? you build it into your time on the box above? Well, the thing is in the box above, if it's a wake up stroke, we're not doing anything the primary stroke centers. And if it's after 30, three and a half hours, we're not gonna do anything. So that's, at that point, no matter what, unless it's been, it happened yesterday, you're gonna go the comprehensive. So, I guess I'm a little confused by the flow because if if it's been more than three and a half hours, if the I mean you're you're basically giving me two options, yes or no. Mm -hmm. So if it's been more than if it's been five hours, yeah, then I'm going to the comprehensive yeah. stroke center. However, what if that time thing? What if I, I don't get to the time box at the bottom, the greater than thirty minute, well, because you've no, already you don't have to because if because if it's greater than thirty minutes, less than thirty minutes. I'm not doing anything at a primary stroke center if it's a wake up stroke or it's over three and a half hours. Okay. I mean, theoretically, if it's a, you can get four, sometimes you get, if you get three and a half hours and a four and a half hour window patient. Okay. So doesn't. with a five hour patient, if it's, um, if it's been five hours and I'm an hour more to Albany Medical Center, for example, then I would still go there primary instead of. Primary stroke doing anything with them. CMH, right. Okay. You only get to the bottom box if you're under three and a half hours. Yeah. The only thing I would suggest is maybe switching that to less than 30 minutes additional and, and flip the arrows because everything yes is on this side and everything and the no's are on this that side. That's my question. Yeah. Yeah. I think it flows keep better it if you keep the yeses on one side and the no's on the other. Yes. No, I, I know how people in the back of an ambulance look at something quickly and try to interpret it. So. And I do have a little bit of it's only a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> so, Mike, I think the only thing we still need is a when do you guys not really care if they come to you because you're not going to do anything either way? Say that again? When, when, does, when does neurology not, not going to be doing anything with them? Like if it's a 6, 12, 10 hour, 24 hour? We're being told by the, the people at Bassett that they've made interventions up to 12 hours and they're still going to ship them up there. Or and there's some places when some benefit with 24 hours. The, the problem is that some of these become really interesting, right? Last seen normal was 72 hours ago because they went home from work on Friday, but they weren't seen until Monday. So was it a wake up stroke on Saturday mm -hmm. or Monday? And you just don't know. Um, so I'm not really sure there's going to be a comprehensive answer to that. Okay. But we arbitrarily are going to need to settle on something. Yeah. For do you want the purposes of this guideline? Last so seen three days ago, going to the closest one, they sort out that they've probably been on the floor for three days <laughs> versus they just moved along yesterday. Do it at 1224 or just. Let me bring that back to the folks at the Met for discussion, if that's okay with the group. Um, just so we make sure that we've got a, a good uh, number there. I think that would probably be the, be the best way to get a, a reasonable answer. I would guess 12, but you, you really do need that, that uh, validation from the neural people there. The, yeah, the, the problem is always, what is the data we have? Yeah. You know, were they around yesterday? Did we see them yesterday? Did we talk to them on the phone yesterday? Have they been having stuttering symptoms, or is this something that really is a brand new event, um, but a long period of time before you saw the person? And then EMS will usually be able to pick up something. There's three days of pee in the bed. 
said that's it here. Uh, on the other hand, bed's dry, person just woke up and fell to the floor, and that's not three days of that move. So should there be something in, to that point, Mike, should there be something in this guideline that states if history is not clear, please obtain medical control or for recommendation? And do we even move to if the presumed time is X amount of time versus a last known normal? Yeah. So if last known normal looks like it's. Just, yeah. just a question. We're really spending a lot of time on this down the bottom here. Are we. A lot of this is stuff that they're educated on already. And. It seems like there'd almost be no harm either way on this. It's just a matter of patient direction. Are we having problems getting the right patient toward the end of this to the right place? And do we think that this is something that really needs to be hammered out where our providers can't use good <coughs> clinical judgment? I think when trying to build it so it's worked so you can use clinical judgment. Okay. Instead of saying last known normal is X, right. last known normal was Friday and it's Tuesday, you can tell whether it's it's a, it's a cute thing versus not. So this way it's in the protocol. It's, it says everything else in stroke is based on last known normal. Make right. this more of if you think the symptoms are within 12, within 24 hours, whatever. Right. I don't know if. If unknown, use your best clinical judgment to see where your patient fits. I'll be in Bass every other little old lady's been fell on the floor after a couple of days. Right. <laughs> what we're trying to do is memorialize something that is sort of already in practice. Right. I mean, I think a lot of um, deferral to the medical center is happening on cases that were suspicious of a large vessel stroke that you can't do anything about it five or six hours in a primary stroke center. Mm -hmm. But how to memorialize that and get it on paper so that everyone understands it, that's, I think, what we're struggling with. But if the person's 12 hours out, if they bring them to the closest center and they realize, because, again, you guys are a lot more highly qualified than we are in the field to make that determination based on a CAT scan or whatever else, is that extra stop going to make the difference between them going to Albany Med as well? It's already been 12 hours. Potentially. <coughs> I think it, it depends if you're getting close to that, whatever Mike finds out is there a limitation. Because quite frankly, I mean, I can tell you, if you were to stop at Cobleskill, for instance, which is a rural hospital, and you're 30 more minutes to Albany, but by the time you see the patient, call, get somebody to transport the patient to the med, that probably could take a couple more hours to get out. So you could lose that window of opportunity. It would, it would very much depend if you're right on that window or whatever. So I think what my suggestion would be the <clears throat> or greater three point five hours onset and <clears throat> less and presumed onset is less than yes. whatever hour of the neurology comes up with. said we were going to try to uh, approve this in December. Uh, should we well, I think tentatively good. approve it with those mo modifications that were just mentioned? My expectation parameter will either be 12 or 24 hours. I can't tell you which, but hopefully the Maybe 18. Answer shortly. Maybe 18. <laughs> <laughs> 17 and <laughs> And it's, is there uh, ED fast uh, for greater? 24. Mm -hmm. 24. I don't, I don't know a lot of people that have had interventions at 18, 20 hours, but, mm -hmm. but per our stroke case guidelines. Well, some of them were, they're actually doing the, embol uh, the embolectomy uh, actually to prevent the need to do craniectomy. So there's some big stuff they're talking about here. Gary. I just have a question also. So the FAST CD is basically large vessel, we're determining a large yes. vessel occlusion. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So there's no need to put anticoagulation. <coughs> yeah. Correct? Because it doesn't matter. Procedure. Okay. Yeah. That's one question. And then the FAST ED, is that something that needs to be 
you know, like nurses have competencies and so forth. Is that something that has to, or will we, they can, uh, the paramedics can use an app? It's, it's the EMS can use an app to. We need to update it because you and I don't show up as drug centers on it. <laughs> It's also, it's also part of BLS. I appreciate that. Appreciate that. All right. Yep. So are we going to use the 24 hours? Is that what we want to do? Yeah, it's a good question. Are we still clarifying? Or are we still clarifying. Okay. I'll put it in 24 hours and we can change it. We can edit it later. So say, as for Sam's point, do we want to approve this today? With that modification or whatever? I'm fine with approving it today. I'd like to. We've been working on it for months. <laughs> are we talking about it for months at least? I'll make a motion to approve it with the mic actually putting the car power. And would we also want to you're doing the, the, the modification at the bottom here, bottom box. Switching that, yeah. I already did that. And so less than 30 minutes additional, and I swapped it. And when it would, if we do approve it today, uh, if it gets finalized, can you distribute it as soon as it's finalized so we, we can see it? When do we need to determine what's 30 minutes of this show? Yeah, because they're saying it's just done. We're going to get all the people who are going to get it. By And is this something we need to forward to collaborative? Yeah, right. Is this something we need to get forward to collaborative? No, but this is a useful tool. This is regional. Yeah. But it's a very useful tool, again, coming from here that's going to carry over. We, Don and I were just on a call with, with the Bassett folks. A lot of our people are having problems deciding where to go. Um, especially when Bassett doesn't have neurosurgery every day. So, this is going to get carried right over. I forgot. Did we just have to vote on that? We, well, we didn't vote. I <laughs> made a proposal. We need to get a second that we need to vote. Okay. Do we have a second? Mm -hmm. We need a second on oh, the Okay. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay. So the last thing I have is I have to read the new address. <laughs> so 24 Madison Ave Extension, Albany, New York, 12203, and it's the dead end of Washington Ave. Water Tower. Thank you. Any other points of discussion or comments? Yeah. Thank you very much. And our next meeting is, yes. Just one thing off the floor. And please don't shoot the messenger up, but um, I've noticed, and a bunch of the people that I work with have noticed, that the linen situation uniformly is, is getting very difficult. Uh, either it's not there, or the linen that's there is ripped, torn, stained. Um, I don't know where it's coming from, but who's processing it. But, I mean, it's still better than the stuff. Well, oh, it, it, it's so pretty uniform. Nurses committee meeting is coming up relatively soon. I'll make sure to pass that along. I went through the other night. I went through five sheets and four blankets. I guess something that was decent enough to put on the truck. You know, it's just it's uniform. It's just <coughs> hey, Mike, when you talk to the nurses committee, can yeah. you just do it no, gently? Hey, guys, please <laughs> keep it quiet while we're talking. <laughs> can we keep it's the side conversation that we're not done yet? Dean? Do you have any? No, it was, it was just that it, it's getting pretty uniform. I, I, know, I know it's like the seconds or, and if you go to the, if you go into their personal, carts and stuff, they're like, you're not supposed to be in there. I'm like, i got to make my stretcher. You know? I can't go out with no sheets or blankets. I'm quite happy with the free linen that's provided. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, just, I just asked Dr. Daly to not complain too loudly. <laughs> maybe just a, maybe a nice... Hey! Yeah. Right. <laughs> Howard, you've got pink sheets and all your best. Yeah, oh. yeah and, and that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> They're actually kind of peach. They're salmon <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Salmon. How do you know that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, you got a camera set up at his house. You can have it. Wow. You call one once. Are we still on the record? Yes. Yes. Totally. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> that's great. So, on that note, then, <laughs> thank you very much. We'll see you in February.